From the scripture reading this morning, I want to lift up the 18th verse. <clears throat> in your ver in version, it says, so they committed themselves to the common good. Another translation says, so they began this good work. They began this good work. When was the last time you heard a sermon on Nehemiah? How many even knew there was a book in the Bible called Nehemiah? <laughs> Get a chance. Uh, there's some great reading. You take Ezra and Nehemiah together and read them. It's, it's really an interesting story. And a uh, little told one, it, it actually occurs almost in the intertestamental period between the Old and New Testaments. It occurs after the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom, has been conquered by the Babylonians and they were, many of them were taken into exile to Babylon. And that's where we find this man by the name of Nehemiah, who is a, we're told, a cupbearer for the king of Babylon. But Nehemiah has in his heart a desire to go back home. He's uh, in all likelihood never been there before, but his home is a place called Jerusalem. And he has this desire to go back, and he's heard that Jerusalem's in ruins, and he has this desire to go back and to rebuild the city of Jerusalem, his home. And so he gets permission from the king to go back, and he goes, and, and the story then takes off from there. Uh, there are people who live in the area of Jerusalem who don't want to see the city rebuilt. And so there's a great deal of conflict, and yet throughout all of this, Nehemiah remains true. And he begins the process of rebuilding, first of all, the walls of the city, and then the rest of the city. Today I want to share a little bit about this man, Nehemiah. He's a good character study. There's a lot of things that we can learn from him. One of the first things we learn from Nehemiah is the need to be responsible. Nehemiah took his responsibilities seriously. Now, going back to the beginning, I said that Nehemiah was the cupbearer for the king. We're not sure what that means. Some people think it means that he's the one that had to drink the wine before the king did to make sure it wasn't poisoned. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I would suggest, not knowing exactly what it is, that it was a probably a, a pretty important position. And we know that, that the exiles, the Israelites who went into exile, they didn't suffer. They weren't in slavery or anything. They actually prospered quite well. Well into the 20th century, Iran had one of the largest populations of Jews in the world. Uh, had been there for 2,000 years, well, more than that, 2,500 years. So Nehemiah was not, well, not in slavery. He, he was prospering. He was doing okay for himself. He could have stayed right there in Babylon and been comfortable. But Nehemiah felt a responsibility towards his people, the people that we refer to today as the Jews, the exiles, and those who had been left behind in the ruins of the city of Jerusalem. He felt a responsibility to do something for his people. First thing we learn from Nehemiah is a need to be responsible. Now that's not a word that is very popular these days. We don't like to think that we have to be responsible for others. I take care of myself. It's kind of what we're raised to believe. If I just take care of myself, I don't worry about other people. But I want to suggest today that if you call yourself a Christian, if you take that label upon yourself, then you are taking on, whether you like it or not, responsibility. We as Christians have responsibilities. We have obligations. We are called to go into the world and minister to the world. We are called to take the love of Jesus Christ into the world. Now for many, being a Christian means going to church on Sunday morning. It means participating in the activities of the church. But over the last few years, uh, hopefully the last decade or so, we have begun to imagine what it is like for the church to get outside the walls of the building and to be involved in the world. Because we are learning that we are not called to escape the world and to hide behind the walls of the church. We are called to come into the building at times, but for the purpose of then ultimately going back into the world 
and being the church, being Christ to the world. And that is exactly what we are doing here at Grace Church. And it's not just the U-Zone. I'm not just talking about the U-Zone today. There are many ways in which we are involved in the world. Most of our time is spent out there. And whether it's at the food shelf or in the nursing homes or delivering meals on wheels or whether it's in some other area of activity within our community or whether it's just in our own neighborhoods being the people of Christ, we have a responsibility to live Christ, to be Christ to the world. And that is the basis, the very basis of why we started the U-Zone. Which brings me to the second characteristic that I want to lift up about Nehemiah. And that is that he was a caring person. He cared about those who were suffering back in Jerusalem. He cared about his people. And he wanted to go and do something for them. And so he began this journey. Back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. To rebuild the city. Nehemiah was a caring person. God has called us to be caring. To whom? To our people? Who are our people? As Christians, who do we consider to be our people? Those people who are members of our congregation? Those who consider themselves to be Christians? Before Jesus left this world and ascended to heaven, he said, go into all the world. I interpret that to mean that our people refers to everyone, to all those who are in need of experiencing the love of God through Jesus Christ. Our work at the U-Zone is an attempt to reach out to our community in that love to those in a very specific grouping of people. We have chosen to minister through the U-Zone to those primarily 6th through 12th grade, you might say, well, there's other people in our community that need to be ministered to, and we say, that's great. There are other churches in our community. <laughs> if everybody did their part, we wouldn't, you know, it would all be covered. Not going to worry about that. We have focused on a specific group of people because we believe that's who God is calling us to, to show the caring love of Christ to that specific group. We can't do everything. We'll get to that in a moment. That's another characteristic of, of Nehemiah, but... We can care for those to whom God has called us to care for. That's what the purpose of the U-Zone is. To show the love of Christ to our youth of our community. To be there for them. To reach out to them. So Nehemiah was a responsible person. He was a caring person. He was a person of prayer and action. I love this part. Now this is in the fourth chapter. You have to read the whole book to get it. But in the fourth chapter... Nehemiah talks about the fact that we prayed. He's speaking of the people at his time. We prayed. And we are undergirding this capital campaign with prayer. We are asking people to pray. If you can do nothing else, you can pray. Some people say, I don't know that I can give a cent. But you can pray. And that's why we're asking people to sign up on the prayer sheet. That's why we've given you prayer cards. There will be little cards on the tables downstairs. We've given you those little magnets to take home. And remember, pray for this campaign. Pray for the U-Zone. Pray for the Ministry of Grace Church. But Nehemiah also believed in action. So in the fourth chapter it says, So we prayed to God and we posted guards. I love that phrase. Uh, they were under constant attack from those around them. They were, under, uh, they were unsure how they'd be treated by the, the people who lived around them. And so Nehemiah says, We prayed for protection, but then we also posted guards. Um, I think it was Cromwell who said in, in some English war, he said, Pray to God and keep the gunpowder dry. You pray, but you do what you can. It's not just enough to pray. It's prayer and then step out in faith and do what you can do. What God calls you to do. And that's what we're asking you to do in this capital campaign. There'll be many different levels that people can, can accomplish through their gifts. There'll be some large gifts, there'll be some small gifts, there may be people, as I mentioned, who can't give at all, but can simply pray. All we ask that you pray about it. Pray and ask what God, God, what would you have me to do through this campaign? What can I do? 
pray, and then act upon what God asks you to do. Two other things very quickly here. Um, Nehemiah also knew when to say no. Sometimes we have to say no. As I mentioned earlier, we can't do everything. We've chosen our place in the community where we can best minister. Um, there may be other needs. We simply can't do everything. You have to learn to say no. And then there was the last one very quickly that Nehemiah refused to quit. He refused to give up. He continued to work in spite of the odds. As we move forward in this campaign, as Jeff has mentioned, it's to establish an endowment. It's not the first endowment that we've established here at the church. We have a Sunday school endowment. We've had that for several years. It's called the Allen Sunday School account. We have, a, we have the principal that sits in the bank, and every year, whatever interest we get off that, we put towards the Sunday school. We have the Meyer account, which is an endowment. We're only allowed to use the interest off of that uh, for seminary education for, for young people. And we've used that in the past. This endowment will be there forever, hopefully, or as long as the U-Zone is, is, is in operation. There will be an, a principle that will be there to earn interest to help us maintain this ministry that we believe God has called us to. As I mentioned, there are many other things we could do, but we believe, as a church, this is what God has called us to. We've tried other things. You know, it's been a long journey. Linda knows that we've tried other things. It didn't always work. <laughs> But as Dale Arndt, our church coach, said a while back, we hit a home run with this one. How do you know when God is calling you to do something? You know. It works. It, it, and the U-Zone works. The U-Zone has been successful. And so we take a step of faith to move forward. We took a step of faith in March to purchase the property. And now we'll take another step of faith that we can raise the kind of money that will at least enable us to continue the ministry and to help support that budget as we move into the future. So we ask in the coming weeks to continue to pray and ask God, what would you have me to do in this very specific area? What can I do to help us reach our goals of our capital campaign? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for where, we have, where we've been and where we have come in these past years with our ministry, specifically to the U-Zone, but we also thank you for the other ministries that we as a church participate in and continue to, to share in. But very specifically now, Lord, as we move forward in our ministry with the U-Zone, we pray that you would enable us to um, achieve success, whatever that means, however that, uh, whatever that uh, means to us in the future. We just pray that you would just give us that success. Help us to be open to the leading of your spirit as we go forward. And uh, help us always to keep our minds.